I killed him, Giles. I killed him and then crushed his bones so that he couldn't ever come back. This is so not happening. I fear that it is. You see, your crushing the Master's skeleton precluded any further attempt to reanimate him as a being of flesh and bone. But it is possible that a skilled necromancer could resurrect him in a disembodied state, as a kind of phantom. On the bright side, however, the Master would be in a relatively weakened state in this spectral form, and the collapse of the Church may well have terminated his resurrection at a critical point. You're completely guessing, aren't you? Call it an hypothesis. Frankly, what truly baffles me is Spike's involvement in all this. All of this, the, the, the regrouping of the Order, the, the summoning of Materiani, the, the possible resurrection of the Master. Logic dictates that this isn't Spike's plan. But if not Spike's, then whose? And to what dark purpose? Wait, wait. The Master was in a dream I had the other night. That's not a huge surprise. He's made dream cameos before that didn't mean anything. But maybe there's more to it. Besides the Master, there were these three nasty demons, like the patron saints of S&M and self-mutilation or something. They had these weird symbols on their noggins that looked something like this. It appears to be a, a sigil of some kind. I'll add this to the research I'm doing on the tattoos worn by those two distinctive vampires you fought. Hey, Giles, maybe I should work with this talisman. If I can master the spell that controls it, I might be able to reverse it. That isn't quite how the Tadaka talisman works, Willow. The necromantic power was in the necromancer. The talisman is charged with magical energies that allow the wearer to focus and magnify his or her mystical abilities. It is a potent tool for witchcraft, but I'm afraid that it can also prove quite dangerous. Unless properly controlled, the talisman's power can corrupt the wearer. I'm not entirely convinced that you're ready to handle so powerful a tool. However, in light of recent events, it may be prudent for you to begin training with it immediately. With my supervision, of course. Of course. Gotta keep me from going to the dark side. Or just, you know, turning everyone into pigs and making the school disappear. Okay. You guys keep up with the research. I'm gonna go see Angel. If anyone can figure out why Spike's back in Sunnydale, it'll be him. Sure. That ought to be constructive. Time well spent. Provided you don't, you know, succumb to temptation and turn him evil again. Now, Cordelia, we're all a bit wary of Angel, and with reason. But you well know it's far more complicated than that. I just know I can never spend that much time with him, or anyone else who might suddenly decide to kill me in my sleep. And yet you're here with us. Imagine that. Look, while everyone bones up on sigils and resurrection, I'll head over to the mansion and bone up on Angel. That so did not come out right. Once again, I believe it's necessary to widen your knowledge of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Please read this and begin practicing these new techniques immediately. Okay, but at this point, I think I have a right to know. Just how many of these pages you got? I cannot imagine what could motivate Spike to aid in the resurrection of the Master. Perhaps Angel will be able to shed some light on Spike's actions. I believe there's a tome by Krauss that could give me some insight into the sigils worn by the demons in your dream, Buffy. Though it may take me some time to find it. Could be someone checked it out. Of here? Are you sure we need to involve tall, dark, and brooding? If anyone can predict what Spike will do, it's Angel. Is he the good angel or the bad angel this week? Sometimes I forget. Not helpful, Zand. Hitting the books? That's helpful. Actually, I've developed this bizarre narcolepsy. I read about dusty old magic, just fall right to sleep. If nobody needs me for a snack run, I was thinking I'd head on over to the alibi room to see what kind of info I could intimidate or possibly beat out of our favorite snitch, Willie. Or possibly buy? Because intimidation's not your strong suit, though there are other things you do well. Hmm. And if I must resort to the buying, that would require cash. Take Cordelia with you, then, but try not to take the scenic route. Buff, it's a crisis. What do you take me for? Go. Do not stop for Nookie. Going. Did you bring back any crystals? I was a little busy, but I did bring you a little something. By the strength of the emanation of Gadala and the glory of Hecate, let that of mine be that of thine. Let the vitality held within be now released, transferred to thee. Wow. What a rush. Thanks, Will. You heard Giles. Be careful with that thing. 
practice safe magic. Not a single worry. I'm all about the caution. Oz is gonna want his girl in one piece when he gets back. And now I've got all kinds of exciting images in my head. And I'm blushing. That's right. Trot off to the lair of your broody Jekyll and Hyde demon lover in the middle of a crisis. <sighs> Talk about priorities. The last time demons attacked the library, you and Xander were canoodling on Giles' desk while the rest of us tried to avoid decapitation. Good lord, could we please stay out of the librarian's office? And what happened to my antique letter opener? I'd always assumed that one of the Fraxis demons took it, but uh, perhaps I don't want to know. Just try to make yourself useful, Cordelia. Okay. Angel's got the dark, broody thing going on, but he's so pale and depressing. It wouldn't kill him to smile sometimes, maybe get some sun? Okay, that would kill him, but still. <laughs> 